Hey everybody, it's Stephanie again with Apex Languages and I have another grown-up grammar for you today. We're going to talk about subject noun phrases. Our good old list of parts of speech. For the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about articles. Of course, a uh, and the. Now I'm going to switch gears, change topic, and go into a little bit more depth about nouns. Let's start with reviewing the basic sentence structure of English. Okay. Every sentence in English requires a subject and a verb. A lot of uh, different languages don't need that subject. Okay, but in English, with the exception of the command form, okay, do this, do that, every sentence needs a subject. Subject, of course, uh, is a type of noun. So, for example, you study. You is the noun, is the subject of my sentence, it answers the question who or what is doing the action and the action is the verb okay now of course not all of our directions uh, that's a, a shade of gray but for simplicity's sake the subject who or what is making the action happen now depending on your verb some verbs can stand alone other verbs require what's called an object, and that is a different type of noun. There are two types of objects, direct objects, indirect objects. We'll get into that more uh, in, in future weeks. Um, but keep in mind, some verbs do not want an object. Some verbs require an object. And other verbs like study could go either way. So you could say you study, period end of sentence, or you could say you study English, you study history, you study music, okay? So uh, you have a couple of options there. Now, if you want your sentence to be a little longer, you can include an adverb. Adverbs tend to go after the object, if there is one, or after the verb, if there's not. Uh, and then the prepositional phrase prefers to be at the end of the sentence. We'll talk later uh, when we're uh, addressing punctuation, the, the fact that both adverbs and prepositional phrases can move around. Um, and the, the thing is, the thing that you want to keep in mind is you can put an adverb. So let me give you an example. Um, you study English well from home. Well is the adverb. From home is the prepositional phrase. So as I was saying, you could say from home, you study English well, but that is an instance when you would like to use a comma. And I'll, I'll go into plenty of detail about that later. Um, the, the basic structure, though, that's what we're talking about today. The basic structure is put those things at the end. Okay, so subject, verb, object, adverb, prepositional phrase. So you've heard me repeat a couple of times prepositional phrase. What do I mean by a phrase? Well, according to the dictionary, it is a word or group of words forming a syntactic constituent with a single grammatical function. Obviously, you're not going to understand what that means, but another way of putting it is that a phrase, it can be one word, it can be two words, it can be many words, but the important thing is they work together as one unit to do one grammatical job. So, in the example uh, from the last uh slide I said you study English well from home. The preposition in that sentence is from, but the prepositional phrase is from home.
home. You see how it's two words. So you study English well, period, right? Where? Okay, we're, we're trying to answer where are you studying your English? You're doing it from home or at home, in your home. Okay, those are all prepositional phrases. And it's worth keeping in mind sometimes for simplicity, sometimes for, uh, you know, shortness. I might just say subjects are a noun, um, objects are nouns. And it's important to keep in mind that it's always noun phrases, prepositional phrases, because that can mean, again, one word or, or many words. But the idea is they are one unit. So, for example, I can take from home and move it around within reason. Okay, from home, you study English well. You, from home, study English well. You study English from home well. But I cannot separate them and have the same results. Home, you study English well from. No. From, you study English well home. It only works when they're working together as one unit. And so that's what I mean when I say phrase. So you see here again, you study. Okay, we're going back to that very basic sentence, subject and verb. Subjects are noun phrases. And you is a noun. The, the noun phrase has a noun at the head. The noun is the most important part of the phrase. In the prepositional phrase, the preposition is the most important part. In the adjective phrase, uh, the adjective is the most important part. There's a, there's a pattern, if you can see it, okay? So this noun phrase has one noun, you. But let's add an article. Now, my noun phrase is the student. It's not just the noun is student, but the phrase is the student. So my subject is the student. Let's complicate it a little bit more. Okay, I can add an adjective to describe my noun. And again, they're an entire unit. If I was to move them around, I can't really with a subject, okay? But let's say um, I wanted to move them around and make them the object. I could say the teacher studies the good student, but I can't say the good, the teacher studies student. Doesn't make sense, okay? So they are one unit. The noun is the last part of that unit, but it's still the most important part. It's the, the head of the phrase. And so it's a noun phrase. Okay, so the article, good, adjective, noun, student is my noun phrase. Okay, now you can have more than one adjective. Let's keep looking at different examples. Okay, so instead of the good student, the good, happy, silly student, it's still a noun phrase. You can add an adverb to describe your adjective, which is describing your noun. The very good student. It's still, that's my subject, that's my noun phrase. Finally, let's look at a really complicated version. The exceedingly well-behaved student sitting next to me while we were studying English in class at nine o'clock at night on a Monday evening in our local community college's off-campus site seemed nice. Whew, that's hard to read, okay? I don't recommend that you write sentences like these, but they're completely possible. They can be a lot longer if you want them to. Uh, and slowly, slowly, I promise we're working up to compl uh helping you understand how to create and how to understand very complex sentences like this, okay? But of course, you always have to start with the basics. So basics, in this sentence, what is the subject? 
Pause the video if you'd like. Think about it. What is the subject and where is my verb? All right. The answer is that everything in the teal color is one noun phrase. This is all the subject. We've come a very long way from you study English, right? Or he seemed nice. That's the uh, pronouns. We'll talk about pronouns later. Pronouns um, take all of this and they convert it into he. You can replace all of this and just say he seemed nice. Okay, so that's that, that basically is what makes it your subject. So... Um, you know, like I said, later I'll teach you exactly how. Right now, feel free to trust me. Um, or you can send me individual messages, messages if you'd like uh, more clarification. But this is the power of the noun phrase. This is the variety that you'll find with noun phrases. So please keep that in the back of your mind. A subject is not just one word. A subject is not just two or three words. A subject can be very long, okay? And a very important part of improving your ability to understand more advanced English is um, being able to identify the subject, the main subject, and the main verb, okay? Not always easy, I am sorry to say but I'll help you through it, okay? But that's it for today. Thank you as always for watching my videos. I hope you learned something new. Have a wonderful day. And don't forget to visit apexlanguages.com for more videos.